I heard Dr. Wallach's message 17 years ago when I got a little cassette tape called Dead Doctors Don't Lie. Have you ever? Mm -hmm. You guys remember getting those cassette tapes like in the 90s? Did you guys get those? They had every week. There, some guy bought like a million of them, and then he just sold them to downlines, and the downline just sent them out. And so I kept getting these tapes. Dead doctors don't lie. Tapes. Dead doctors don't lie. I, I didn't think anything of it, but I was already starting my. I was a pharmacist. And do you guys need to hear my story? Do you want to hear, yeah. Yeah. You want to hear it? Because we all. Yes. Okay. All right. I always feel kind of silly telling my story. One time, I, all my friends were going to this, like. Uh, Psychotherapist, it's like a psycho psychotherapist couple back when I was in my 30s, and they were like, Dad, you should go to a psychotherapist. I'm like, I don't want to go to a psychotherapist, I'm not crazy. But they kept talking about it, and all my friends, it was the thing to do in Boulder in the 90s, go to a psychotherapist. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, I'm like, okay, I'll go to the psychotherapist. And I go there, and I lay down, and I talk about myself for like an hour. I'm like, now I know why people go to psychotherapists. You get to talk about yourself for an hour. <laughs> you get to talk about your problems and nobody interrupts. <laughs> it's the best thing ever. Right? And I've done them. That's why people go to psychotherapists. So you guys are going to be like my psychotherapist. I always think that when people want to hear my story. You really want to hear my story? Okay, you'll be my psychotherapist. You'll love me and I'll get healed. And that really is happens, by the way, when I do these talks. The love that we give each other is incredibly healing. As we all know intuitively, don't we know that? We get some good dose of loving, doesn't that feel good? Ultimately, ultimately, it's more than it feels good. Ultimately, it activates your anti-wrinkle, bone building, muscle building, immune, immune boosting, everything good about your body, the uh, systems. It's called your parasympathetic system, which we're going to talk about here momentarily. So don't underestimate the power of simply feeling good, of simply indulging in relaxation, in simply feeling the love. So thank you very much for that. Okay, so I started off as a pharmacist. I went to pharmacy school because I wanted to study food as medicine. Uh, in fact, I want to say food as an impact of the brain. I was always fascinated with the brain. And I suspected, as a youngster, that there was a relationship between food and the brain. So I went to pharmacy school because I wanted to study how to use food to meditate the brain. And when I went to pharmacy school the first year, the first uh, day, my first year, they do an uh, interview with all the students. And I went in, the dean, he did an interview with the dean. And this, uh, after already accepted, he wants to know who the new students are. And I told him, I said, I want to study food as medicine. And he just laughed. He thought that was the funniest thing he'd ever heard. And this was like 1983. <laughs> And I was like, you know, I was kind of confused. He said, no, we study drugs here. This is prescriptions. This is pharmacy. You know, and I had already moved my, myself to Boulder, Colorado, and I was all committed, and I did my prerequisites, and I heard pharmacists were making a lot of money. So I was like, <laughs> all right, I'll tough it out here. You know, I'll figure it out. And, and day one, I am just blown away because pharmacists and pharmacy school is about studying poison. And they tell it to you. They tell you how the poison works, why it poisons the body, the mechanisms of the poison. And I'm like, what is, how did this happen? This is, this is how we help the body. I was completely blown away because I didn't know anything about drugs, really. And then, simultaneous with my experience as, as a student learning about the poisonous nature of drugs, we also, pharmacists study something else that a lot of people don't, don't realize or appreciate, and that is we study nutrition. Pharmacists study nutrition, but we don't study it like a nutritionist. We don't study it like a dietitian. We don't even study it like a doctor. We study it like a pharmacist, which means we study the molecular structure of vitamin A and selenium and all the different things that we call nutrients. And we study how that molecular structure interacts with the body to create a change. We study the medicinal nature of nutrients, and on top of that, we study the nature of disease as nutritional deficiencies. We study arthritis as if it's a nutritional deficiency disease. We study the nature of nutrients in pharmacy school. We're studying the nature of nutrients. Turn my phone off real quick. Um, we study the nature of nutrients as if they were the causes, as if their lack was the causes of disease. And we study them as if, as you use them medicinally to treat illnesses. Replacing them, we study deficiency disease states. And so, in pharmacy school, I'm learning about poison, the, the drug na the poisonous nature of drugs, and then I'm learning about the healing nature of vitamins. I'm like, okay, well, why aren't we I'm thinking this? Why aren't we using the nutrients? And I graduate pharmacy school thinking this, and then I go to work for a drugstore. I never worked in drugstores before. And in all honesty, the first year, I made a bunch of money. 
And I was like, okay, I can live with this. And the second year, it, it was starting to get a little troubling because what I was seeing was nobody was getting better. People were on these large groups of, of medication, like 5, 10, 15 medicines, and the people taking all the medicines was not everybody. It's not like the medicines were equally distributed across the population. It's like there's a concentration of people who take all the medicine. The kids, and they're mostly kids and older people, and some unfortunate younger people in the, in the middle. But it's, a, it's, like a, it's like maybe 20% of the people are taking 90% of the medication, and many of them are taking multiple medications, and nobody's getting better. And here I am, knowing about the poisonous nature of medicines, feeling like I'm poisoning people. So I took it upon myself to start to recommend nutrients. <laughs> you know, I knew what they were, you know, so I was like, you know, you might not want that antibiotic, but vitamin C and zinc, and well, you know, needless to say, Kmart was thrilled. Okay. <laughs> and, and one day, I got a call into Mr. Osier's office, God love Mr. Osier, and he, I'll never forget what he said to me, he said, Ben, you're just not cut out to be Kmart material. <laughs> 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 He said that to me, and that was that was it. And so what I did was, I started my own pharmacy. Now prior to that, I had been funking around some skincare stuff, and some of you know I'm in the skincare business, and I have a background in skincare. So I, well, as my career as a chain store pharmacist was coming to an end, I was developing skincare products in the pharmacy, and I was recommending nutrition. I'm starting to dabble in this alternative way of looking at the body. Now keep in mind, this is 1980. 1988, 1989, it was still kind of weird. Nutrition was still, you're still a health nut, okay? And there weren't a lot of people didn't really know a lot about this stuff. And so I started using nutrition to help heal people's skin. And I started to notice that when their eczema would go away, so would their asthma. Or I started to notice when they started to use probiotics, not only would their psoriasis disappear, but so would their digestive issues. And I started to notice all of these things coming together. And like I said, I start to see patterns. You start to see people over and over and over again in a pharmacy setting. So I'm working clinically. I'm experimenting in a way. I'm learning my craft, but I'm seeing the results personally on people. And after seeing this over and over again, I figure I had to start talking about this. And I start telling people because people didn't know. And now we're talking maybe 93, 94-ish kind of thing. I'm 33, 34 years old. And I'm pretty young. And I start getting these tapes in the mail. I get them over and over and over again, and I wasn't thinking about it, but I had started doing some talks, and I started in a small way. The first talk, I had three people in my lab. I had a, a table, and I sat around. I talked about nutrition, and then four people, and then five people. But I was starting to do some talks, and I was getting these tapes, and one day, for whatever reason, I just decided to listen to the tape, and holy cow, I was floored. Because this guy is saying everything that I knew. He's talking like a pharmacist. He's talking about nutritional deficiencies. He threw the wrinkle in about the soils, which I didn't know at the time. And I was just completely blown away by this guy. And I listened to the tape over and over and over again. And I just started to, to absorb everything he was saying. I started to use some of this stuff in my talks. And he was just this, I didn't know who he was. I never, you know, his name was Dr. Wallach, obviously. But I didn't know who Dr. Wallach was. We're talking 95, maybe 96-ish, kind of thing. And so one day I'm working out at the gym. And uh, my buddy Russ is helped me work out. And I, for some reason, whatever, I mentioned these tapes that I had gotten. And I'm starting to listen to it. I was how blown away I was. And Russ is like, I know Dr. Wallach. He comes out here all the time. This is 1996-ish, I think. And uh, sure enough, uh, he goes, you want to meet Dr. Wallach? I'll just set it up for you. And I said, yeah, yeah, I want to meet him. And sure enough, one day, she come walk into my lab with Dr. Wallach and Russ and, and Bob. And I, Dr. Wallach, and I, was, and I talked, have you heard the story? Have you heard the story? No, I haven't. And, he, and uh, Dr. Wallach is right there. And I'm, this was, uh, you know, it was amazing to me. This guy comes off the tape, this, this miracle man. And I was blown away. But he was blown away because I had been listening to his tape so much. He thought he was talking to a, his doppelganger. He thought he was talking to his, you know. So he fell in love with me, and then I fell in love with him. And he, had, he asked me if I would do his uh, radio show. By the way, this was called longevity at this time. was called American Longevity, and it just started. And there was maybe like I don't, that, I don't even know if there was a thousand people, five hundred people. It was kind of came from an old, another company, and, and Dr. Wallace was just building the company. And Dr. Wallach asked me if I wanted to do his radio show. If I, and I was like, and here I was, like trying, I was already trying to get the word out. I was presenting, praise God, this is how it all works, right? And then Dr. Wallach comes in and he says to me, you want to do my radio show, you know, when I'm out. And he traveled a lot, and so I became the, the second guy 
You know, when he would go out of town, I would do the Dead Doctors Don't Lie show, which I still do occasionally. I'll do the Dead Doctors Don't Lie show. And so I would do it, I, I, I did it over and over and over again. I was hanging out with Dr. Wallach. I was learning, I was part of the business. I was watching the business grow. I was developing these skills. I was seeing more and more and more people. And I was seeing more and more people get better. See, Elaine stood up here and mentioned, I, I think Elaine mentioned a few people. Where's Elaine? Did she mention? You mentioned like a few people that had results, right? In this room, in this room, there are probably 10 or 15 people who have had life-changing results. In a room of, what, 200, 150, I don't know, how many people are in this room? 150 people, right? Something like that. You're talking 10% of this room has had life-changing experiences. You guys, I've seen this. This is a sample size of 150. I've seen 15,000 or 150,000. Imagine what I've seen over and over again. And this is what you can build a business on. This is how you can make money. This is, this is the way you should be making money. And as far as network marketing goes, oh my God, you can't pick a more per human being friendly model of business. This is human being friendly. This is person to person. This is you seeing the results, you buying from the, your neighbor and talking to your neighbor and developing it as part of a culture and as part of a community. And that's what longevity really is. It's a culture and it's a community.